This is the MT Predictor weekly update for October 30th. Happy Halloween to everybody out there. Uh, let's go through these markets quickly. Again, we'll start with the Dow Mini here on the daily chart. Again, from uh, oh, wave one up to wave two here, down to wave three, and ABC unfolded into wave four, which is this area here. Got our TS3 sell signal into wave five, the minimum wave five down here. Once wave five is complete, typically you get a correction back to the wave four DP. That's this decision point resistance area off the wave four swing here. And that's the area that we're looking at as a potential, uh, we talked about that turning point or critical area for the market. So we've got a close above this decision point area. And you see the high was put in. Uh, in the mini contract here at 12,228. On Friday, they were not able to take that high out. Uh, if they can, if they can trade above that high, especially if they can close above this high, that would point us upward that there may be more upside. Doesn't mean, at least at a minimum, we should get consolidation in this area, put it that way. And the probabilities would shift from a downward bias I would say to the upside and then that maybe we would test this wave two or B area uh, upwards of 12,750 area um, okay that hasn't happened yet we'll wait and see if they can't take out this high uh, if we could you know then these downside additional downside targets uh, you've got your DP down here off the wave five swing and we'll look at the ES for even a, a bigger uh, downside projection if, well, let's just take a look at it now. If, here's the E signal, or uh, the uh, ES. Okay, so you can see when I click on the uh, Elliott Wave patterns, it shows us we had a nice three wave pattern down into the wave 4 resistance. We've closed above the wave 4 resistance here again. We'll see if the ES can take out uh, 1289.25. If it can, again, that would be pointing us upward at least uh, consolidate in this area before it maybe tests, uh, again, more to the upside, uh, upwards of 1354 area. And uh, if they can't, then things could roll over again and we can project our down wave target of wave 5 here 3, 4 and 5 here's your minimum wave 5 just below 1100 in the uh, ES typical wave 5 this one is going to come in uh, right about 10, call it 1060 so again, this is this critical area here. Now we've got this week, uh, Wednesday, at uh, I think it's 12:30 is the FOMC meeting announcement on interest rates, and then at 2:15, the uh, press conference. I believe that's according to Bloomberg anyway. That's the uh, schedule for Wednesday. So keep that in mind this week, a big Fed week. Uh, it can be a market mover. It can change trends. You know they don't expect a change in interest rates, but depending on what the uh, that news conference or that press conference uh, some of the uh, maybe hints as to uh, any other quantitative easing anything like that that could come out that could affect the markets that uh, is going to be something to watch for so keep uh, especially if you're an intraday trader uh, make sure you want to kind of wind things down that morning, that first hour of uh, Fed Day, and uh, be very careful trading during the Fed announcement. Wait till after the announcement, till things settle out a bit. And then, uh, typically, the day after the Fed meeting is usually a slow day. It's usually not a very good trading day, but we'll see. Uh, anyway, so that's kind of the bigger picture analysis here. Uh, we looked at Goldman Sachs, remember we were talking about that $100 area in Goldman. If Goldman could get back above $100, uh, which it did, remember it closed back in here above $100. Uh, 
let me just make this a little bigger here. Uh, then we said that this decision point off the B swing here would come into play. We've hit that area now up around that 115 and change. Uh, you can see there's a little minor ABC pattern there that we also uh, some provided some uh, resistance there. Uh, so uh, won't uh, won't be surprised if we get a bit of a pullback uh, here in Goldman. And again, this led led us up, led the markets up. Uh, once we got that close above a hundred dollars, and the high of uh, that day got taken out, that was again pointing upward, and we'll see where we go from here. Uh, BKX finally did come up into our had a little five wave pattern down hit that hit that minimum wave five support there bounced typically we get a bounce just above the wave four here what we call our wave four DP uh, right in the uh, area now so we could see some retracement there in the BKX as well uh, it maybe means a little pullback in the market again with the Fed meeting that could change everything we'll see uh, let's look at uh, silver here. So silver, we did get our uh, buy signal was hit. Remember, I said we got to watch this. We didn't want too many weeks to go by. Uh, I'm sorry, days to uh, days or weeks to go by uh, before this thing got uh, entry got hit. Otherwise, we'd need to cancel it. But it did get hit last week at 3410. You can see the target there would take us to new highs in silver. Uh, that's on the weekly chart here, so we'll see. Uh, how that plays out and gold gold kind of a uh, I've got the the major wave here into a major wave two or B uh, we could actually project let me just project that down look at down wave C here two and three so here's your wave C targets right in conjunction with the DP here, which would be just below the 200-day moving average. Okay, so we're in some resistance here. <coughs> you can see we came off of support, this wave 2 or B support, into the wave C targets last week. Now we're in some bigger area resistance. I mean, this goes all the way up to about 1850 in, in gold, so it's got a, a pretty big area resistance here because it's a major pattern. Uh, but if we can't get out of the 1850 area, then we could roll over back down, maybe around the 200 period. We don't see this 200 period give way. Uh, again, we can go back and, uh, <clears throat> you know, a couple years on this chart, you can see they've tested it back into, uh, this was uh, July uh, 2010. It was probably the closest test of the 200-day moving average in gold that we got for a few years going back um, this goes back oh to uh, the end of 2009 anyway on the daily chart here uh, actually I could go back further but the 200 period goes back to about end of 2009 there so anyway it's been a while since uh, this was the last test of the 200 period back in September at the end of September here so this has been very, 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 very strong support in gold. And we've looked at the weekly chart as well. So we'll see if we do get a little pullback maybe in gold here. And then uh, and then we'll see if it continues to try to move upward. The dollar, you can see the dollar had this three-wave pattern on the weekly chart. It's pulled back. It's closed below the wave four support. We're going to see if it comes back into it. If if this low gets taken out, then uh, let's just see if that low of 74.72 gets taken out, then it may be pointing to more downside. If not, this wave four should get a uh, move back into this wave four support and then maybe move up to the wave five targets. Let's just look at what that is. Right, minimum wave five target would start right around seventy nine thirteen. The typical just about eighty. So if this area holds, we get kind of a little snap back into this wave four area. 
as long as this low doesn't get taken out, then uh, we should see that wave five target in the U.S. dollar. Oil has now come into some decision point resistance off the prior swing here, uh, so I won't be surprised. Uh, this oil market needs to make a decision here. Again, if we get a close above this area and that high gets taken out, we'll get more upside potentially in oil. If not, then uh, we could see a, a bit of a, a correction or a roll back down in oil. All right, uh, I think I've covered everything. Oh, we can look at the uh, the the uh, intraday on on uh, Friday here. We just had a uh, TS3 long. It's a little ABC pattern in the uh, Dow Mini here. You can see that was a nice 3.5 to 1 hit the target. Uh, it didn't take too long to get to that target on Friday. So again on a $360 risk take out about $1,200 at the target. So again the whole key when you're trading is uh, initial risk is small. When you get to the target it's bigger than your initial risk. Preferably at least twice twice the size. So on average, if you can get your winners twice, two and a half times the size of your average loser, uh, that's the way you can make money over time. And just take a look at the uh, ES. TS3 here on the ES on Friday. That was about 2.6 to 1 there. Again, kind of choppy, but uh, it was Friday. It was kind of choppy day, but did make it into the close there. Don't know if the NQ, yeah, there was a TS4 here in the NQ the end of the day. Uh, that was good for 3.7. Had a couple of four fault starts back here, so minus one, minus two there, but you make it back with 3.7. All right, so hope that helps. Uh, that helps. Have a good Halloween. Remember the Fed meeting on Wednesday, and uh, we'll do this all again next week.